Okay. So again, do you think that man can improve on what God has said and what God has done? Do you think man is wise enough to overrule what God has spoken to us about? He told us how to do things? Let's take a look at his word tonight. Turn with me in your Bibles to Deuteronomy chapter 4. I want to read from chapter 4, verse 9. And also Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 5 through 9. Father, again tonight, I thank and praise you for the privilege of preaching your gospel. And once again, as I stand before this congregation, as I stand before you, I acknowledge that in myself, I am nothing. Without you, I can do nothing. I stand before you and acknowledge that in myself, I am totally dependent upon you. Therefore, I'm asking for the next few minutes of time that you would grant unto me the ability to preach the message that you have put upon my heart. May it minister to each and every one of us. I ask it in Jesus' name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 9, and it says, Only take heed to thyself. Keep thy soul diligently, lest thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and lest they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But teach them to thy sons and to thy sons' sons, to your sons and to your grandsons. God is saying, teach my word, teach my word. So I want to read now verse chapter 6, verses 5 through 9. Deuteronomy chapter 6, reading verse 5 through 9. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when you rise up. And thou shalt bind them, pardon me, thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand, and they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy door gates. Okay. I want to remind you tonight, and I'm speaking to fathers, but mothers as well. Okay. Along with the joy and the privilege of being a father comes a great responsibility. A great responsibility. A God-given responsibility. God has ordained, and I want everyone to hear this, I want to remind you, this is the word of God. It's not Pastor Dabney's word. I didn't write it. I didn't put this message in it. God did. It's his word. All right? God has ordained that the husband be the head of the house. God has ordained that the husband be the head of the home. Ephesians 5, 23, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. The husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. God's divine plan for the home is that the men take responsibility and the role of leadership. God ordained that the men be the leaders in the home and to take that responsibility to teach the wife and children godliness and holiness and to provide for his family. That is the responsibility that we take. I remember the day that I asked Ruth to marry me and as we stood before the, the minister repeating the vows, I said to Ruth, I will take care of you. I will take care of you. I will do all, everything in my power 
to see that you are taken care of and that we have everything that you need. That is the responsibility that God put upon me. He puts it upon every man. And there tum- there's been times between then and now that I've repeated that to her. Honey, I'm going to take care of you. You don't have to worry about this. I'm going to take care of it. I've tried to provide for her. I've tried to take care of her. But I have to acknowledge to you, God has been the answer. He's given me the ability to do it. Okay, so God's divine plan for the home is that man take responsibility and the role of leadership to teach the wife and children godliness and holiness and to provide for his family, to provide for his family. But I ask you to think about all that's going on in the world today. I ask you to think about all that's going on here in America. I ask you to think about the juvenile homes that are, that are filled with young people that have gotten themselves in trouble. Just this past week, I read the news where two 15-year-old boys went into a convenience store, robbed the store, jumped over the counter, and stole a bunch of drugs and stuff, and then just fired a gun in there to keep the, the people afraid. They took off, and a few hours later, they caught them. But now they're finding that there's a string of those kind of robberies that have taken, that those boys have committed. We listen to the news and read it in the paper from time to time, and we find that teenagers, 16, 17, 18, shooting and killing one another. How is this happening? We find that, and I read again this week, we have teenagers that left home, ran away from home because they couldn't take what was going on there, and they're on the streets taking care of themselves. How are they taking care of themselves? Stealing, selling drugs, getting involved in drugs. What is the problem? How does this happen? Somewhere along the way, man has lost sight of the plan of God. He's lost sight of the plan of God. We have shirked our responsibility. I want you to hear that. Men have shirked their responsibility. Men want a wife. They want children. But they do not want to accept the God-given responsibility that goes along with that. They want to have a wife. They want to have children. But they don't want the responsibility of taking care of them, of leading the house. We have lost sight of the true meaning of manliness and have begun to follow the world's concept of a man. I ask you to think about this. The world's concept, now when I speak of the world, I'm talking about unsaved. The world's concept of manliness is you have to be a macho man. Man has to be a macho man. Man has to drink this kind of beer. Man has to smoke this kind of cigarette. Man has to to spend night after night in the bars, just sitting around in the bars. Okay. The macho man says, I'll do whatever feels good to me. Not worrying about my wife, not worrying about my children, taking care of myself, what I want to do. I ask you, you think I'm telling the truth? I ask you to look at the advertisements that are on television today. Look at the advertisements. Okay. Think about what is being said and what is being done. What are they telling us to do? Okay. The devil, you hear me, the devil is piping a tune to the men of the world today. He's piping a tune. The men of the world are, mar- are marching right along with what Satan wants them to do. They're following him. Although it will The the march is leading them right to the gates of hell. Leading them right to the gates of hell. But the tragedy is this. Multitudes of wives and children 
are following right along with them. Wives and children following along with them. I want to say something to you and ask you to think about it for a moment. Men, you men that have sons, little ones, those sons are going to want to be like dad. They're going to do what dad does. They want to be where dad is. They look at you as their hero. But listen, ladies, that doesn't let us, you ladies, off the hook. Most of your daughters want to be exactly like you. My mom does this. Or my mom can do this. I want to be like my mom. Are you hearing it? If, if you would note the Bible history today, if you really study your Bible and, and hear and see what the Bible is saying, you will find that whenever man has followed God's plan, there has always been blessing and prosperity and growth. When we talk about prosperity, we're not just talking about money. Prosperity is total. It's health, a good home, a good family, a good church to go to, a good job, the ability to do the job. God prospers us in so many ways. And when we are obeying God and following God and the Word of God, these things will fall right into place because God blesses His children. God loves us and He wants to do the very best. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Brethren, I wish that you would be in good health and prosper even as thy soul prospereth. God wants us to be in health and proper. Look at your Bible. Again, God blesses those that keep his commandments. But when man falls or when he fails to keep God's commandment, there is always chaos, destruction, and punishment. We see it all around us today. We see it. Fathers, I want to share with you today, God has given us a commandment. Ladies, I want you to hear it as well. We are to teach our children the Word of God. We're to teach them the Word of God. God has also told us how to do it, when to do it, and where to do it. So let's consider what God is saying. First, how are we to teach them? How are we to teach them? The word says, thou shalt teach them diligently. Listen to that word. Thou shalt teach them diligently. See? The word diligently derives from the word diligence, which means to esteem, to love. To esteem and to love. I like that. Okay. God tells us to love, to love our children. It means we are to teach God's word with respect and with love. Remember the Bible says, Fathers, do not provoke your children to anger. Teach them in love and respect. Okay. We are told to talk to our children about the things of God. Okay. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 4 says that we are to bring them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Nurture means to rear, to care for, and to educate. We must educate them in the word of God. Teach them about Jesus. How to live the Christian life. Teach them the values of Christianity, the values of following the Lord. Admonition means a warning counsel. We must teach our children that God has given us commandments that we are to obey. And if we do not obey them, there is a price to pay. God is to, we're to teach our children that. The when, when are we to teach them? Do, do we walk? To our children, do pardon me, do we talk to our children about God's word? God said, Thou shalt talk to them 
when thou sittest in your house, when thou walkest by the way, and thou shalt and when thou shalt liest down, and will you rise up? That's God's word. In other words, God is wanting us to continually be teaching our children the word of God. The way we live. Do we live a godly life? Can our children say, if they're talking about us, can our children say, my mom and dad are true Christians. My mom and dad really love the Lord. Will our children say that about us? Hey, the psalmist David said, this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. As I read that and think about it, I cannot think of a better way to start each day than to gather our family around us and have united prayer and to talk to them about God. I love it in my home, in our house. Ruth gets up maybe half hour before I do. Now there's a method for that reason, folks. If she gets up before I do, she gets the coffee all made, gets everything ready. So I can just get up, come in, get a cup of coffee, sit in my chair. She's sitting in the chair across from me. She's got her Bible out. She's studying. I can pick up my Bible. And we can have that time together reading the Word of God. Once in a while, I'll be reading. she say, honey, listen to this. And she'll be reading a devotion. She's already read the scriptures. She'll be reading a devotion. And she'll tell me what it says. And once in a while, I will share a scripture to her that, that God has really spoken to my heart like he did yesterday. I told her, I said, honey, I don't know how many times I've read Psalm 42. I don't know how many times I've read that psalm. But yesterday... Because I've been seeking the Lord and asking God, as I said this morning, I want to repeat it. I have been seeking the Lord and asking the Lord for something personal in my walk with Him. And as I've been praying and seeking, this has been going on for several weeks. I didn't feel anything, didn't feel an answer. But yesterday morning, reading Psalm 42, verse 8, the last portion of verse 8 said, he is the God of my life. God's the God of my life. He was answering my question. He reminded me of it this morning. He's answering my question. That which I have asked him for, he's the God of my life. I have everything available to me that God has to offer. If I'll just obey him and receive it. Obey him and receive it. Okay. So I believe that if everyone keeps the, God's commandment and follows God's word, there would be no broken homes, no divorces, no juvenile homes. These are the products of sin and disobedience. I believe that we would not have things said to us that America has more prisoners locked up in prison than any other place in the world. If we were following God's word, obeying God and living for God. You see, David said something else that's very precious. You'll find it in Psalm 119. David said, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. If we've got the word of God in us and we are loving him and obeying him. We're not going to sin against him. And folks, think of what America would be like tonight if every family was following God's word. Every family obe obeying him. There would be no need for prisons, juvenile homes, law courts. Wouldn't be any need for it because God's way is perfect. God's way is perfect. I remember reading about a, a, the Welch Revival several, several years ago. People were praying and praying and Welch crying out to God for revival. 
God sent an evangelist. He began to preach. And God began to move in a mighty way. The, the, the revival broke out. It spread all over. And all of a sudden, the bars were closed. The liquor stores were closed down. The jails were emptied. Why? Because men and women were getting saved, getting filled with the Holy Spirit, getting their lives changed. Went on to talk about how long that revival lasted because people begin to seek God. We are praying here in America. We are praying. Many right here in this church with me. I've asked God to raise up an army of prayer warriors to join with us and pray for revival for the United States of America. To pray for revival in the churches. It has to start with the church. Judgment must begin at the house of God. So I'm praying, Lord, send revival, true revival to the church. To those churches that have shut the door on the Holy Spirit. Lord, move in a mighty way and, and break open those doors and let the Holy Spirit be poured out among the people. Let us see a true Holy Ghost revival where God is moving in the power and the glory of God is being revealed. The sick are being healed. Miracles are taking place. Signs and wonders are following. Souls are being saved and filled with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. That church is revival. That's revival. And that's what I'm asking God for. But it will only come when we begin to follow the Word of God. In closing, I want to say this. The Bible asks, where do we put? Where do we put God's Word? God said, these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart shall be in your heart. David said in Psalm 40, verse 8, Thy law is in my heart. Your law is in my heart. Hebrews 8, 10, God said, My law I will put in their minds and write them in their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. The Word of God has to be in our heart. Can't be just in our head. Oh, pastor, I can quote so many scriptures. You might be able to quote, quote them, but it hasn't gotten from here to here. This is where it has to be, in, in our heart. So I ask this, have you allowed God to put his word in your heart? Remember, God said, I will do it. But have we allowed him to do it? God won't force his way upon us. He offers it, and he's able to do what he promised to do. So I believe that it is time that our God-given place, that we take our God-given place in our home and begin to teach our family the Word of God. Ladies, my challenge to you tonight, if your husband, if your husband isn't leading, if he isn't the head of your house, you need to sit down with him and say, we need to talk. And you need to tell him, I want you to take over and be the head of this house. I want you to sit down and begin to teach our children the word of God. You see, hear me. There are many, many men that go to church today. Many men that come to church. Okay? They come with their families. But they are not the head of their homes. They're not taking their God-given responsibility. They're expecting their wives. You teach the children. I'll make the money. You teach the children. That is not what God said. God said for the man to do it. So ladies, talk to your husbands. Tell them, this is what God said. This is what I want you to do. I want you to start leading. I want you to start te teaching the children. Grandparents, many of us here tonight, most of us, I would say, are grandparents. We need to, to take their responsibility. If 
your son or daughter-in-law are not doing it, you need to teach your grandchildren about Jesus. Bring them to church with you. Share Jesus with them. What's going to happen if we do? We're praying for God to do a mighty work here in America. It has to start right here in the church. And when we start doing our part, God will take it from there. Father, tonight I come to you in the name of Jesus. I have spoken the word that you have given me to speak. You knew when you gave me the word who was going to hear it. You knew who was going to be in this service tonight. You knew who was going to be listening over the air. You knew all about it. And Father, I'm asking you to touch every one of our hearts tonight. Cause us to sit down alone with you. Say, Lord, search out my heart. I ask it tonight in Jesus' name. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Praise God. Do you believe his word? Amen. Do you want to respond in obedience to his word? Amen. Then let's do what God said and let's expect a mighty revival. A mighty revival starts.